Hello students, welcome to EPG Parchala. I am Vinodini Kapoor, teaching in the Faculty of Management in Chandigarh. Today, we are going to discuss about the module System Analysis under the paper Management Information Systems. After completing the module, the students will be able to understand the concept of system analysis and why is it needed. Understand system process and list what are the various stages. Understand the concept of organizational analysis and its importance. Understand concept of analysis of the present system and explain logical analysis. Discuss what are functional requirement analysis and determination and list various benefits of system analysis. A system in general is a set of parts, steps or components that are connected to form a more complex whole. For example, a computer system may contain processors, memory, electrical pathways, a power supply, etc. For a very different example, a business is a system that is made up of methods, procedures and routines. System analysis refers to the problem solving method that involves looking at the wider system, breaking apart the parts and figuring out how it works in order to achieve a particular goal. Broadly, system analysis is a process of collecting factual data, understand the processes involved, identifying problems and recommending feasible suggestions for improving the system functioning. Now this involves studying the business processes, gathering operational data, understand the information flow, finding out bottlenecks and evolving solutions for overcoming the weakness of the system so as to achieve the organizational goals. System analysis also includes subdividing complex processes involving in the entire system, identification of data store and manual processes, installing a new system, whether it's a home theater, a factory assembly line, or way of working in an office. It requires proper planning. Without this planning and system analysis, the change might not work. One needs to understand how the current system works before the new one is installed. Otherwise, there may be many problems and the project could also be a failure. The major objective of system analysis is to find out answers for each business process, what is being done, how it is being done and who is doing it, when he is doing it and why it is being done or why it has to be improved. It is more of a thinking process and involves creative skills of the system analyst. It also attempts to give birth to a new efficient system that satisfies the current needs of the user and has scope for future growth within the organizational constraint. The result of this process is a logical system design. System analysis is an iterative process that continues until a preferred and acceptable solution emerges. There is a core set of skills that all analysts need to know, no matter what approach or methodology is being used. All information systems projects move through the four phases of planning, analysis, design and implementation. All projects require analysts to gather information, requirements, models, the business needs and create blueprints for how the system should be built and all the projects require an understanding of organizational behavior concepts like change management and team building. Students, let's take up an opening case of the managerial cause of information technology failure. A significant proportion of IT projects fail to fulfill 
their original objectives. This results in wasted resources and a damaged reputation for the responsible IT department. In many cases, the causes of the failure are organizational issues and not technical issues. For example, Qantas, the Australian national airline, endured two high-profile IT failures in the recent years. In 1995, their project EQ, a 10-year technology services contract with IBM, was cancelled after four years. This was estimated at a cost of $200 million. Poor planning contributed to the failure to upgrade a complex and unwieldy IT infrastructure which was saddled with 700 odd applications written in older programming languages. Further, in 2008, Qantas cancelled JetSmart, a $40 million parts management system implementation due in part to a dispute with the unionized users or the aircraft mechanics of the system. The union advised its members not to assist with the implementation, claiming that the software unnecessarily increased the members' workload. An analysis of these IT failures reveal several contributing factors. Firstly, Qantas faced the challenges of a complicated technical infrastructure and outdated legacy applications. More significantly, however, was the failure of company leadership to understand these basic IT issues. In public statements, the CFO of the company seemed not to care about the user perspectives on new software, preferring instead to put in what the management thought was appropriate. This attitude, in part, led to union problems and claims of poorly designed, hard-to-use software and inadequate training. Aging applications and an unwieldy technical infrastructure are challenges that are faced by many organizations today. But the senior management attitude that seemingly disregards the views of software users cast very serious questions about Qantas prospects for IT projects' success in the future. We now come to discuss what is system analysis. The analysis phase answers questions of who will use the system, what the system will do, and where and when it will be used. All of the deliverables are combined into a system proposal which is presented to the management who will then decide whether the project should continue to move forward or not. The analysis phase is so named because the term analysis refers to breaking a hole into further smaller parts with the intent of understanding the parts, nature, function and interrelationships. The basic process of analysis involves three steps. Firstly, to understand the existing situation or the as-in system. Secondly, to identify improvements. And thirdly, to define requirements for the new system or the 2B system. In order to prepare the system proposal in an effective way, system analysts must use a systematic approach to identify hardware and software needs, asserting, identifying and forecasting costs and benefits then comparing them and choosing the most appropriate alternative. The final deliverable of the analysis phase is the system proposal. Now what does this do? It compiles the detailed requirement of the definition statement, the use cases, the process models and the data model all together with the revised feasibility analysis and the work plan. At the conclusion of the analysis phase, the system proposal is presented to the approval committee. Now, this is usually in the form of a system walkthrough. The goal of this walkthrough is to explain the system in moderate detail so that the users, the managers and the key decision makers very clearly understand it and they can identify any needed modifications that are able 
to make a decision about whether the project should continue or not. Before moving to the design phase, the project should be reviewed to ensure that it continues to contribute to the business value of the organization. The line between the analysis and the design phase is very bloody because deliverables created in the analysis phase are really the first step in the design of the new system. Okay students, we now come to what are the different stages of the system analysis process. Now this involves the very first stage which is the recognition and the formulation of the problem. Firms and organizations encounter numerous problems that arise in the working of their organizations. This leads to improved efficiency and profitability. The job of the system analyst is to provide effective solutions to those particular problems to make a planning decision or implement a planning decision. The brainstorming may require an answer to the question such as what is the cause of the problem? Who has diagnosed the problem? What is the chain of arguments that are leading to make such a decision? Why is the solution important? And how much money it might save? Inevitably, the resources available to the firm are always limited. Does it seem that there would be a reasonable return on systems effort if applied to the project or would this be effort better employed in tackling a different problem? As a result of this particular dialogue, a very clear picture shall emerge about the scope of the problem and the likely benefits that would result from its solution. The second stage is the organization of the project. Now this can further be bifurcated into the very first step that includes composition of the system team. Once scope of the problem is defined, the course of action is to be formulated. This requires a team effort and an ad hoc system team shall be set. Ideally, this comprises the developers within the organization and the specialists who may anticipate various facets of the solution design. The best resources available within the organization for tackling the problem should be brought together and with efficient leadership they can develop into a system very quickly. A typical system will contain a competent team leader. He is an experienced system engineer with great detail of knowledge of the problem that is to be tackled. A user is a person who represents the team and shall operate the engineered system. The system modeling experts. Now they lie in with the functional departments like the research, the process development, the sales department, which will be able to provide information for the subsystem models. The designers for the building of hardware, representatives of the engineering team, who will be responsible for the design of this particular hardware to meet system specifications. Computer programmers who shall be involved with the software development. The next step in the process here is to define what are the different terms of reference. The system team should always take steps to ensure that they are given the widest possible terms of reference and are given access to any information or person. The third step is scheduling the project. The system engineering team should apply the system approach to conduct its activities to ensure that the work is carried out logically and systematically by an allotted team. Thus, a decision network should be constructed, for example, say a critical path schedule. Then, the targets should be set and the duties should be allocated. The system team will then ensure by its critical approach to its own method of working that the problems are tackled in their correct order of importance. 
The third step in the stages of the system analysis process is defining the system itself or outlaying the definition of the system. It is a process of analysis in which the system is segmented into important subsystems and the interactions between these subsystems are indicated by drawing a flow block diagram. The subsequent task of the system engineer is to design or engineer the individual subsystems so that they work together towards achieving an overall objective. The system design process must sufficiently be flexible so that this description can be changed as further knowledge and experience is accumu accumulated during the course of the project. This is especially important in the design of a new system when they may vary in adequate knowledge at the start of a project. As the project proceeds, the system description will become clearer as the process of innovation develops. Indeed, there may have to be several iterations of the design process before a satisfactory solution can be found. We will now come to the fourth step, which is definition of the overall system that contains the system being studied. What we do here is we first create a separate flow block diagram and this is done to display that what is the role played by the system within the wider system it is a part of. The flow block diagram of the system as part of the wider system should include a much detailed version as available. A great deal of clear thinking will be very necessary to fill in sufficient detail on this diagram so that proper account is taken of the interactions between the system when the formulating objectives are met. The fifth step refers to defining the objectives of the wider system. Systems form part of a hierarchy of systems. It is impossible to disassociate the objectives of the system being studied from those of the wider system it will form a part of. In fact, it is the objectives of the wider system that determine the environment within which the system has to function. If this environment changes, so will the objectives of the system change. To take a very simple example, the objectives of a single chemical plant must fit into the overall production plan of the company. At different times, the company plan may stipulate one of the several objectives. Therefore, in a process improvement exercise, there may not be one unique objective, but rather a catalog of possible objectives that result in a different way of operating the plant. Defining the objectives of the system. The formulation of the economic criteria requires a careful study. However, in the early stages of the system, it is defined in broad terms. There will usually be conflicting objectives at the start of the system study. It is essential to make a comprehensive list of all possible objectives in their ranked order of importance. One, or possibly a few objectives might then be singled out as being the most important ones. At this important stage of any system study, much questioning will have to be done and different views are considered. In the end of the system, analyst decides about the correct objectives and takes a binding with the concerned and finally communicates his findings to everybody so that that future cooperation can be relied upon. We will now look at the seventh step in the system analysis process. It refers to definition of the overall economic criteria. Students, it's very essential that the system analyst should formulate 
the cost assessment of the changes or the improvements that have to be incorporated. This process needs a critical study to assess how important are changes and the investment and how it will be affecting the organization. Let's now come to the last step which refers to information and data collection. The end user of the information system should carry sufficient knowledge about the working of the system. Hence, the need for documenting system-related information is of paramount importance. It is very essential for an organization to draft manuals and instructions that are related to implementation of the system as a key role is played by the experts who build the same. This knowledge has to be retained within the organization so that there isn't a loss of information of the system, engineers and the analyst who leave the organization. We will now discuss the concept of organizational analysis. An organizational analysis is an important first step in system analysis. To improve the information system, it is imperative for the developers to be well versed with the organizational climate where the system is located. It is essential to have an understanding of the organizational and the management reporting structure, the people, the business initiatives undertaken and the business environment. It is essential to be well versed with the organizational overview to understand requirements and needs of an information system from view of the end user. And who is the end user? The business units and the work groups. Since they are most affected when the management information system will be enforced. For example, a new logistics control system for a grocery chain store cannot be designed unless the developer understands what are the business needs of the company and what are the business activities that affect the logistics supply. Now within the process of the organizational analysis comes the analysis of the present system. Prior to designing the new system, it is very important to study the system that will be improved or replaced. It is essential to understand how the system interacts with the existing hardware, the software, the network, people, resources to convert data resources like the transaction related data into services, products, reports, so and so forth. The very basic essential elements of an information system such as Input, processing, output, control are then documented. In asserting hardware and software needs, system analysts may take the following steps. The very first one suggests that the inventory computer hardware already available in the organization is important. Second, estimation of current and the projected workload of the system. The third evaluates what is the performance of the hardware and the software using a predetermined criteria. Then it is important in the next step to choose who is the vendor according to the evaluation plan. The next step involves acquisition of hardware and software from the selected vendor. Okay students, let's now understand what is logical analysis. The logical model of the system is a blueprint of the current system that displays only what the current system does without regard for how it does it. The logical analysis helps the analyst to comprehend easily the various processes, functions and data associated without getting bogged down with all the issues that surround the hardware or the software. It also enables to understand and analyze the non-computer components of the system. 
the application of the concept of the logical model is not merely limited to use it in the design of an information system. They are commonly used in a variety of situations like remodeling of the organization infrastructure. We will now discuss the functional requirement analysis and determination. This is the most challenging step of the system analysis process. The analyst works with a team of real end users to determine what type of information each business activity requires, what is the format, the volume and the frequency and what responses are necessary. It is essential to determine the information processing capabilities required for the system activities like the input, the processing, the output, the storage, the control to meet the information needs. The user interface requirements. One determines what type of input and output requirement of the user are there. They also include sources, formats, content of each input and output media. The processing requirements. This discusses what are decision rules, the calculations to convert input to output, and what time it will take for processing that particular input to output. Storage requirements. What is the size of the database? Whether it is a common database or a distributed one? What are user queries? Then come the control requirements. What type of measures of accuracy, validity, safety, security and adaptability requirements for the system input process, the output and the storage functions are adopted. We will now discuss what are benefits of system analysis. The very first can be stated in terms of cost, efficiency and flexibility. Now when a system analysis is properly performed, it makes certain that the correct path is taken with regard to applications and it helps to minimize risk and errors which reduce future IT requirements for fixing problems. If this process is performed properly, it will not only save the company's time upfront but ensures that the right application path is being taken for the very first time. Growth and business charge considerations have also been accounted to accommodate what are the future plans and Errors are kept to a minimum level, mitigating future IT overhaul requirements. The next benefit is stated in terms of better management and better control. System analysis allows for better management through changing the software to suit any business changes. This means that the final product will be totally controllable. If changes or enhancements are required, the requirement of rewriting the whole software will be removed, which is a very, very normal cost. The risks. Through the process, potential threats are identified. A risk assessment is carried out to evaluate all the negative impacts on the process. After deeply considering this, a comparison of the risk is made against the related benefits and a decision is taken accordingly. The quality. The quality of the system is ensured through checking of the system constantly through system analysis. Customized approach. Using system analysis and design helps a business identify opportunities and problems by recognizing and evaluating strengths and weaknesses of the company, focusing on the strengths of the business while seeking constant improvements in areas of weakness allow the business to improve quality across the board. Competence. System analysis and design are crucial in situations where the integration of a multinational information system is required. Among the advantages of competing globally 
is increased market coverage area which generally results in increased profits the versatility system analysis and design can be used to improve procedures in handling accounts receivable in preparing and implementing a budget and in scheduling regular or one time projects system analysis and design can also be used to identify and develop market new products as well as identify and enter new markets with existing and new products profitability the business of the business is to make money an obvious advantage of using system analysis and design is to improve business quality and increase the profits low quality or substandard products have been detrimental and consequences on the business are tremendous over a period of time low quality or substandard products also hamper the reputation the expense incurred with repeating task erode profit competitors can move into the company's sales te- territory very easily the benefits of the integrated system include higher levels of quality control and lower production cost by streamlining data processing and production processes so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module system analysis is the analysis of a problem that a firm tries to solve with an information system system analysis focuses on capturing business requirements for the system analysis identifies the what of the system and directly relates this to the design phase during which how of the system is determined many deliverables are created during the analysis phase this includes requirement definition use cases process models and a data model information management systems essentially list requirements which are approved by the business owner before the technical design begins in this way the business owner is involved in a sign off of all the requirements the technical team is also involved with specifying requirements so that they are in a better position to understand what is needed it helps in so ensure that all the technical team does not design and build something that is not specified requirement management will ensure that project management scope for the design and construction does not devi- deviate from requirements thus minimizing time delays and cost overrun due to rework at the end of the analysis all of these deliverables along with revised planning and project management deliverables are combined into a system proposal and submitted to the approval committee for a decision regarding whether to move or not to move ahead with the project hence a complete information system analysis is needed to ensure rapid project delivery and optimal return on information management investment thank you